Bonjour. Hello. This presentation will discuss phenotypic plasticity, focusing on the insectivorous in birds of our temperate forests, and notably the example of the tit family. One of the elements of global change is fast climate change, as evidenced since the start of the previous century. Since 1900, the average temperature on Earth has increased by 0.7 degrees Celsius, and uh, the living beings live in warmer environments than what they have experienced in the past thousand years. Some living beings benefit from this, but other species of plants and animals suffer. In evolutive ecology, we're interested in how these organisms could adapt to climate change and how fast. To avoid decline, living beings who suffer from climate change have three solutions. One, to migrate towards a more favorable environment. The distribution of species moves. Second, the populations can evolve genetically, but that takes time. And third, individuals can modify their lifestyle, their behavior, their physiology, morphology through phenotypic plasticity. And this is what I'm going to define as the capacity of a living being to modify his traits when its environment changes. And I shall use the example of tits. This illustrates the life cycle of blue tits. The female lays her eggs, incubates them, and when they hatch, the chicks are fed by both parents until they fledge uh, after about 21 days. They can then reproduce the next year. So a breeding a clutch of uh, 10 eggs is extremely complicated. It takes up to a thousand caterpillars, so they need to find these caterpillars in the environment. Every year, the tits face a crucial question. When must they initiate the laying of eggs so that the chicks can be fed with caterpillars? Because they're only available during a small time frame lasting about two weeks. So towards the end of March or early April, they prepare the nest and initiate uh, the laying of the very first egg. After this, the female lays an egg a day. So for a clutch of eight eggs, it takes eight days. There is then a period of 14 days of incubation, after which all the eggs hatch on the same day. And it's about nine days later that they have a maximum uh, requirements in terms of food. So the decision to lay the very first egg happens almost a month before the crucial phase of their growth. They must be nine days when there is a maximum abundance of caterpillars in the forest. Along the evolution, the tits manage to adjust their reproduction to the phenology of caterpillars, which is the main food for their chicks. However, global warming means that the abundance of caterpillars comes much earlier, which creates a shift between the abundance of caterpillars and the needs of the tits. The tits need to change their reproductive dates, and this can have dramatic consequences for the bird population. In Europe, much research has focused on the adaptation of birds by using these uh, bird houses to follow their reproduction from one year to another. This longitudinal approach has allowed us to analyze and study the reproductive dates, the phenology of cull tits in a forest in England over a period of half a century. In these uh, 15 years, they have brought forward their reproductive date by 14 days, and the cycle of caterpillars in the forest has also occurred 14 days earlier in the spring. So as you can see here in the top right, the phenology of the tits and that of caterpillars are uh, extremely well correlated, which means that the chicks can be well fed and the population can uh, be uh, very good, including during very warm springs. And in the final graph here, if you have uh, a representation of the correlation between uh, when the tits lay their eggs, or rather the warmth in the spring, the correlation is even stronger than the previous one. 
which leads us to suppose that the warmth of the spring is probably one of the key instruments used by tits to trigger reproduction. To explain this shift of 14 days in 50 years, there are two hypotheses. The first one is that the population evolved genetically under uh, the effects of natural selection. The second is that of phenotypic plasticity. By analyzing data collected on the same individuals throughout their life, it was demonstrated statistically that the fast adjustment was not caused by a genetic evolution, which would have taken several generations, but to phenotypic plasticity, meaning that each female tit has the capacity to adapt the time when she lays her eggs based on the warmth of the spring. So it's true in some populations of tits, but it's not universal, and sometimes the females do not adjust their reproductive dates in the best possible manner. On this graph, you can see the changes in the average uh, egg-laying dates of uh, several populations of coal tits across Eurasia. You will see that although many populations such as uh, in the United Kingdom or in France have brought forward their reproductive dates over time, some populations such as Russia have not changed the dates that they lay their egg, and other populations such as in Finland here in Orange, where in fact uh, they lay their eggs later in populations where plasticity is not yet sufficient to address the challenges of climate change, there's an increasing shift between the new needs in nutrients, in nutrients and the abundance of uh, food in the environment, hence a higher mortality of chicks. We established a balance of all of uh, uh, the research that had focused on changes in reproduction and migration, and bringing forward the dates of reproduction is very common. There are a great many species that migrate and lay their eggs much earlier in the spring. Uh, about 20 studies have shown that this is the result of phenotypic plasticity, but none was able to demonstrate any part and any significant involvement of genetic evolution. But we do think that natural selection may foster the evolution of plasticity because it can evolve itself if natural selection favors the most uh, plastic individuals and the overall population becomes more plastic too. So prospects for our research in future, uh, there are two answers, of course, which you may have asked yourselves you'll during this presentation. The first one is how do tits, how can tits predict the optimum reproduction date, what can they identify in their environment to predict the phenology of caterpillars? We know the temperature involved, but it's not the only indicator. The second question is, why do some populations manage to face the challenge of climate change through individual plasticity, while others uh, fail to do so and are declining?